Appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> it's a nice bath, but I do squats. You guys have had a busy week, right? A busy week. Last weekend, you were at the uh, Saturn Awards. That's right. Whatever you do, whatever makes you feel comfortable, 
We will get through all the questions that we can in the short time that we have together. And I'm the guy that has to keep us on track, so if I don't get to your question, it's my fault, not theirs. But you can go visit them at their tables. <laughs> all right, let's start with you. What is your name? My name is Lauren. And Lauren? Hello, Lauren. Do we have a question for Lauren first before she gets to ask a question? <laughs> I know she did. I don't is that magenta, plum, or merlot? <laughs> Sign it. Oh, oh, where? Where do we sign it? I see it right there. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, very well. Do you know who Stewart is? I do know. Stewart? I do know. I have a question for each of you. So I'll Thank start you. With That's a great way to do that. Yeah. So, Michelle, um, I hope this isn't too uh, bizarre. Uh, what, what was it like um, going into the academic industry as a colored woman? Oh, there, yeah, that's a good one. Um, you know, I understood the importance of it. I, you know, I'm biracial. My father's black, my mother's white. Um, there's three of us. I'm the uh, three girls. I'm the baby. And my father knew when we were growing up the importance of optics, of seeing yourself represented in the world. So when we were little kids, we would watch as a family reruns of the original Star Trek. And when I saw myself, my sister saw Uhura on the bridge, this incredibly beautiful woman of color with, with grace and with confidence and with power. And with a, you know, there was a reason she was there. She wasn't just the pretty thing. She had command. I believe that whether it's conscious or unconscious, she gave me and my sisters the permission to be bold, to be brave, to be here, to have a voice, and to, to, to let my voice be heard. And so I knew that when I got this job, you know, like all of you, I, I was pinching myself because I'm a fan. I knew that there was an importance of me representing all these brown and black children. It's one of the reasons why I talked to this, you know, producers, and I wanted Rafi to have this sort of huge uh, silhouette of unruly curls because I wanted everyone who has curly hair to know that in 2400 in space, we're still there. <laughs> I didn't get to meet her in person, but I've done a few of um, podcasts with her sister, and I also was able, uh, during the pandemic, virtually, to give her a presenter with a Lifetime Achievement Award for uh, a um, okay. trek. Yeah, it was yeah, it's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. She changed my life. Thank you. Give another question for her. Yeah, uh, this is for Gates. Okay. Um, what was it like working with Gates the Star Trek? Uh, no. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what was I never worked with the Star Trek people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a contract. She's actually alone, and we all just kind of. Yeah. 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 What, what was it like working with those people? Those people. <laughs> <laughs> those people. <laughs> I mean, let me just say, can you imagine working with those people? <laughs> you know, it's it's stunning. And when I found out, I had to work with those people. <laughs> Michelle heard and Todd said, oh my god, those people? <laughs> yes, please, yes, yes please. And they work with them. That's what I love. Yeah. All right, perfect. And then my last question is for Todd. That's me. Right. <laughs> I'm going to let you have your moment of shine right now. Oh. So, oh. Can I challenge you to arm wrestle on the stage? Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, we don't really have to go over it. We'll do it right here. On the edge? Okay. Yeah, we'll do it right on the edge. I'll go one. This is crazy. Uh-oh. Oh, you're getting serious. Oh! All right, you ready? Got your hands in there, ready? Yeah. Go. Fight! 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 Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm bad. Because 
during the after strike. Yes. You said something about not having insurance. Do you have it now? Thank you for asking that. And yes, because I did a movie that's in uh, theaters right now called Anyone But You. Uh -huh. That gave me the money to make my insurance, but I appreciate that because so out of our 160,000 members, 98% uh, of our members don't make the $26,000 and it needs to qualify for health insurance. So thank you so much. Everyone needs it. Can I just say that Brent Spiner and I, for example, okay. do not have SAG insurance because even though we make a we don't. We don't. We do have insurance. We have the well, I didn't pay for it like everyone else had to pay. For it. So she didn't qualify. I didn't for her qualify SAG for SAG after insurance. Because now you no, no. no. So she's saying no. So even though you guys are watching, and this is the crazy part of our industry, you know, Star Trek Picard, it's on the platforms and watching it all the time. We don't get no. that money doesn't contribute to our insurance. Residuals do not contribute to our insurance. Right. So we have to get a job and make sure that a job, job that pays enough to get the money. The money. So, so literally, she's saying she well, do not have insurance. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you what it is. Hi, I'm Ben. I've got a couple of you earlier. Um, my question is, if you, if your characters had a particular holiday <coughs> episode, what would it be? Ooh, a particular holiday Such a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, I think I could sort of do maybe a big spa day with every great <laughs> masseuse in the world. <laughs> it, you know, like ever, ever, every wellness thing, every that. And that would be really a fun day. I mean, Can I do that episode with me? Totally. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's not the counter insurance. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for Picard Season 3. When, as an older, uh, or as somebody who watched Star Trek Next Generation when I was a younger man, and then being older now, it was probably the most cathartic, healing season of TV I've ever watched. Cool. Cool. Speaking of that, Mr. Stashwick, yeah. what is it like coming into the show and being the guy who rains on everybody's parade? <laughs> <laughs> So there's the Starkey answer, which I will not give. I will give the uh, honest answer, which is, uh, narratively speaking, I'm the guy you want, right? Like, yes. you don't want it to go smooth, because there's no story. The right. crowd's roll. Like, they say it at the end. Like, <laughs> you want that that bump in the road, that, that bump in the road to come from an unexpected place, <laughs> right? So, so having having Shaw show up sorely in the story as, as a roadblock to them. And then, you know, our brilliant writers actually give this really deep, heartfelt reason as to why he's a roadblock, other than you don't show up without orders and take another captain's ship. So I was right. Um, but then, <laughs> and then to then reveal why he he is so standing his ground. It just makes for so much better storytelling. Um, so what a joy. This is the kind of things that we want to play as an actor um, with all that meat on the bone. Like, you don't want to be just the guy that shows up with a clipboard and says, sign here, uh, and then you move on, you know? You want, you want that, that to be the guy that ran down the parade because that's where good storytelling comes from. That's the term for But if I could say, because I did take slight offense. I love you, but I took slight offense when you said, well, they can't just say it correctly, and that's the end of the story. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Jessica figured out the answer about the change when she goes to science. That's what was different. I, it wasn't just saving her, she said, your ass too, baby. <laughs> So that she can do all those wonderful things. Uh, but if I had stood in their way, or if I had stood in their way, 
in there, read it. It would have been one episode, and you would have still done all those things, but it would have been a short show, and we wouldn't have had the 10 episodes. All right. I, I did do this so that we could have the great conflict. I love it. Very good. <laughs> this, this is conflict. It's so much better than, you know, Oh, Chef. We love
period of, I would say, three years where Jim had seen me on a plate I did in New York called Cloud Nine. And, uh, and, and, uh, and he, I had not known that he saw me in that, but he was looking for someone who could do multitasking. There's someone who could coach, Jennifer Pond or whoever was going to be the lead, someone who could choreograph. I had been a choreographer at the Van Theater Company and different places. Although I was basically acting at that time. And, and so we wanted someone who knew puppets and masks, and I had studied with somebody who taught me that. So I didn't do anything. I was in awe of them when I did the tiny part of being alone to stay in that. I mean, they were so brilliant, okay? So brilliant. And I felt, I mean, I actually, they, they do this thing where they, everyone leaves and they don't say anything to you, and your puppeteers are down there, and, and I'm playing the secretary out there. They all leave, but Kermit stayed, and so Kermit is who's in my eye line. I can't see who's, okay. you know, and he's just doing something in the mirror. He's going, like, oh, he's doing this whole thing, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he starts talking to me. And we were like three lines into it, I went, oh my God, Jim. Like, oh. <laughs> and that's a trick, apparently, they do to everybody. And so that was pretty magical, because you just, you just believe it, because, you know, Kermit is in all of Hi, I'm a little nervous. No, it's okay. um, I kind of have a rolled into one for all of you. Michelle, I thought you were great. I, I admire you for wanting to do that representation. And um, I, it looked like you and Jerry Ryan had so much fun with your scenes. I'd like to know what that was like. Gates, I can't believe I'm talking to Dr. Crusher right now. I have a friend who would be dying right now. <laughs> Um, but what was it like to bring Beverly back, and what was your favorite part? And Mr. Stashwick, um, what was it like? Um, oh, Todd. Just Todd. <laughs> yes, sir, Todd. <laughs> what was it like um, just joining the Star Trek family? Um, I adore working with Jerry Ryan. And if you've seen any of her like videos when she or Instagram when she giggles and laughs, it's oh my gosh, it's incredibly infectious. We're like two peas in a pod. If she starts laughing, I start laughing. I can't control it. We're we just become children on set. Uh, it was a blast, and, and I absolutely understood that I was like I'm hanging up with seven of nine. <laughs> 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 it was pretty really cool, so I love them. Uh, and you know, favorite part. That is a hard one. Uh, I have to say, I really adored uh, Ed Spilliers. I really loved working with him so much. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun to have another pretend son, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so that was that was really cool. But actually, it was it was just the experience of being back with people who are, are my real life friends. I mean, we are in, we are a family. We are. We are a close knit family. It's been decades. Yeah. And but we were back in uniforms, and we were all, you know, there. And so it wasn't the crazy fun it was the first time around because it was freezing cold on that set. It was yeah. so cold. But it was amazing, and I was incredibly grateful for the entire experience. Actually. And uh, so being invited into this family, um, what a rare and wonderful. In the past, my first action figures were Kirk Spock and McCoy when I was six years old. Wow, how wow. surreal for you. Super surreal. Yeah. And, and, and at the same time, when somebody said, Did you ever dream if you told six year old Tom Sashley someday he'd be a Starfleet captain? I would say, Yeah, that was the point. <laughs> Uh, I was lucky to have Franks as a director on another show, or yes. uh, worked with him on Leverage, and, and then Terry, who I had 12 Monkeys with. So the, the, the pump was on here, Terry and Alice, 12 Monkeys watching. Uh, and then go back and watch season three of the part and see all the Easter eggs that 12 Monkeys are, yeah. that they'll come from. But they, I, it, it was threefold. So my family introduced me to Star Trek. My, uh, my cousin Tori is going to be an exact figure. Then I jump on the set and I meet these amazing humans and actors and storytellers. 
and that's the second family. And then the third family, and this sounds cheesy, that I mean it from the bottom of my ticker, my dipshit from Chicago ticker. <laughs> um, you guys have been the third part of the equation. Yeah. You guys are yes. the, the rest of the family. Yeah. And it really, really hit home when I was at the premiere walking the blue carpet, it was yeah, blue, yeah, blue. Uh, and I saw my uniform that I wore for six yes. months in a case that I can't touch anymore. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so oh, Sergeant, right. It's my part of uh, legacy. Legacy. Yeah. I mean, you know it. You've lived in it for how did I just see that? I mean, same here. I was just like, oh, it's in class now. I was just saying it just the other day. When he started, we had no clue. No clue at all. Brett and I knew each other in New York. We're like, I don't know, maybe it's going to be a few months. We were lucky we'll do like six episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm actually up here for my mom because we grew up watching Next Generation together and my mom was just 
obsessed with games we've had. She yeah. loves you so much. And so I do this, if I did come up and ask a question, she might tell me what I get home. So, um, but this is a general question for all of you guys, which is, um, obviously games are in Next Generation, but um, for any of you watching Star Trek growing up or whatever, um, were there any characters throughout any of the various branches of Star Trek that you really resonated with or that you really loved, even besides your own characters? Oh, many, many. Um, I, I, I really loved the episode with Hugh Ivor. Yes. You know, yep. I thought that was fabulous uh, because it was so inclusive. Um, I mean, there were many things. I loved the episode that questioned about the trill, that introduced the trill, because the writer, who was a gay writer, and I think he was the first um, openly gay writer who wrote and got a Star Trek episode put on the air, he actually asked the question, what is love? If you're thinking of it, how much is physical? How much is experiential? <coughs> you know, uh, how much is, what, what is it? And I think asking questions is the most important thing. And one of the most important things in life. Giving love is number one. But asking the right questions, being curious. And that to me was a really profound episode because it just got people to think about it and not be so afraid of things. Like even when the character says at the end, well, I'm not quite ready. You know, when somebody, this trill, has gone into two or three different people, it's like in 24 hours, it's like, no, I can't handle this because it's like three in 24 hours. So it doesn't mean never. It just means let's think about this and think about what, how do you feel about love? And why is it so scary to you to thought about this and that together? Anything to get you to really look deeply is awesome. And that happened in episode after episode. <laughs>
And I love the fact of, that it was historical. It was really exactly what was happening at that time in Germany and it really had a political you know, side to it. It was very powerful. But I will also say that I have watched high school productions of Oklahoma recently. And it has blown my mind because when you actually have 14 year olds playing these parts, mm -hmm. or 15, 16, it makes sense in a way that the original never made sense to me. And the, the sort of racism of Judd, it all makes another whole thing. And it had a big impact on me, these 14 and 15, 16 year olds. So I actually think that's a great one with dance and dealing with America and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I've choreographed shows like Pal Joey, which I don't love as a show, but I did a great happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and they get to see this flinch and now dig you later. That was the name of the uh, But there you go. I don't know, what's your favorite one? Um, my favorite one right now is in. Oh, yeah, see, I, that, that's a that's great one. one. As is a Pippin. Pippin's a good one. Yeah. You know, I, I just love movement. You can manipulate that microphone as you need to. Uh, somebody asked the question I was going to, so I'll ask, I'll ask my backup question, which is quite silly, uh, which is for Gates. Uh, there's a picture online, you assume outside of uh, a sound stage in your Starfleet uniform on a unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> It's Gates McFadden on a unicycle. She's wearing a on a unicycle. That was my unicycle, which I brought down, because in first season, I, you know, we have these long hours in first season. I mean, like, 18-hour days. <coughs> so that would be, I just had it, and I would whip around, because it's actually exhausting. It's not like bicycle ride. It's you are doing everything. You can use your core and you can also kill yourself. But <laughs> really, don't try it if you haven't. You know, it's, but it, it was so much fun. And I don't even remember taking that picture, but I've seen the picture and yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can, you know what? It is one of those things. I think I couldn't go backwards now, but oh yeah. I mean, I might crash into it. You just look like. I mean, it's exhausting though. Yeah. You get off of it from a short run. If I went like this, I'd get off and I'd go. Hey. <laughs> it's, you wouldn't think it, but it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm glad you said you could still do that because we have a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did to me on John Rivers, and I did not know they were going to do that. And so it was like, I'm lucky I didn't get her. She was assumed to be from Williams. Thank you. I was not expecting to be here. Um, <laughs> what did you think this line was? It's a concession line. This is, this is where I was up here. This is not a concession line. You're in the wrong Oh, I'm in the bathroom. My bad. Um, my question is for Todd. Um, what was it like to come into Star Trek and play the best captain on Star Trek? Oh, oh. fight words. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, no, where's my mic? Um, you know, it's, it's what, it's such an, I, I've had a good, wonderful time uh, living in genre shows. Uh, half my career is being creepy elsewhere. Uh, and, and, and to come in, I know, like, Puffy, Angel, like I've been Monsters, I've been Dracula, I've been, I've spent a lot of time in genre, but there's a few that are super special, right? There's a few that have lasted 50, seven years. And, and so it, it, it is, uh, it's such an honor. We are custodians. I mean, when, you know, Next Gen was carrying a torch from something that started before them. And then we are continue to carry that torch, and it's a responsibility. I recently got to uh, present uh, a Saturn Award with uh, uh, Walter Kane, uh, who's actually my neighbor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's my neighbor, so we hang out. Uh, and so it was so amazing uh, to stand up stage with a person who was part of the original pilot line. Like, 
they lit the fire that we continue to, to burn. As far as being the best captain, I have zero doubts. <laughs> um, you know what's really fun about Nick, this character is people have described him as the first Gen X captain. <laughs> because he's so over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think there's, there's a curse in Gen X captainry, which is just eye rolling. Yeah. And, and, and he, he got high marks in that class. Just the, the, that guy, like us Gen Xers, we just so used to bullshit flying <laughs> that we, we can smell it on my own. So it, it, it was a great chance to play an uncommon captain uh, and that folks may not have seen before. So thank you for your kind work. Thank you. who didn't get your questions answered. However, they will be back at their tables today all weekend long. That's where you get the photos, autographs, all of that stuff there as well. Uh, so have you have questions, questions, questions at the table? Yes, absolutely. Yes, I answer all Todd's questions. Yeah, but I answer all the questions. We all answer Todd's yeah, questions. We all answer Todd's questions. So before you guys leave, we have a request of all of you guys. If you would kind of just fill in, we'll kind of stop where the microphone is, just kind of fill in that space. We would like to get a photo with you for the division. So yeah. Slide on there.